All right, what is going on, everyone, and welcome back to the Search Bay Podcast. Today, I am joined with Relly again. How are you, mate? How you doing? Doing good. How are you, man? Yeah, it's as as we were just saying. Then it has been it has been a hot minute since we've actually done something together. Yeah, a while. <laughs> well, I know my people mad at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen those comments. I, I was yeah. probably one of them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Yeah, Where's I'm that like, Cavalier man, content? <laughs> I know. Oh, man. Oops. <laughs> I was like, what is going on there? <laughs> I had to think about it, too. I'm like, dang, why did this do that? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we got, we got a lot to talk about. Something that actually happened today, of course, we'll have our fair share of Cavaliers talk and all of the other stuff going on. But the first thing I wanted to open up with, we actually finally had a player actually move today. Jermichael Green has joined the Golden State Warriors, they're saying. What do, what do you think about that signing? Is that a good one? Because I'm pretty sure he got, like, deported off to Oklahoma or something. <laughs> and that's, like, the last place you want to want to get sent other than Sacramento. So he managed to find his way out. He got a buyout. And now he's playing for the, the you know, champions. So what do, you, what do you think? Is that a good move? For the Warriors? Yeah. Like... Warriors and death is dangerous. Anybody with just a little bit left in the tank is good for the Warriors, man. Um, that's why, I like, when I seen that move, when it said the Warriors, I'm like, yeah. Had it been for any other any other team, it would have been kind of like, eh. You know what I'm saying? Because Jermichael Green, he is a good role player. Don't get me wrong. He, like, he is a really usable role player. But for the Warriors, you're magnified. Because all those little small intangible things he does – it's just on a whole nother level. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it was it's a great move. What's it with them and always bringing in, like, a new stretch forward every single year? Like, a couple of years ago, they I think they brought in – it was it Jonas Jarebko? Was that his name? One of the, <laughs> I think it was him. Then they had Naman Bayer the last year. And these guys, like, win a championship, and they always go and play overseas. And now they've brought in Jermichael Graham. That's another one that they've added. And – I think he should be able to for sure help out and add something to them. My question is, though, because, you know, Jermichael Green, that's a good pickup. But the other player that's, you know, been kind of surfacing around, I made a video actually talking about, I think the Golden State Warriors are going to sign this guy. Apparently, they're interested in him. But to Marcus Cousins as well, how is that guy not on an NBA roster right now? Like, I know he might not be the greatest teammate, which is, I think, clear to see because he always gets sent off from nearly every team that he's on. But surely if you're the Golden State Warriors, you're looking at a dude like DeMarcus Cousins, especially considering, like, you got teams like the Timberwolves, who we'll get into a bit later, that are, you know, generating all these seven-foot type of guys, the Cavaliers as well. Surely you'd bring in a dude like DeMarcus Cousins just in case you got one of those nights where you're like, damn, we can't run Steph Curry at the five anymore, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. surely, would, would you be interested if you were the Warriors? It de- I would, but it really depends on what they do this offseason, honestly, because uh, they still got Looney. Uh, they still got James Wiseman potentially just coming back this season, who they're going to give a couple of minutes to. But it all depends. It depends if James Wiseman stays healthy, and it also depends if they trade <laughs> James Wiseman for another trade that's luring in the air but um it depends on those two scenarios if if those two scenarios is kind of like kind of shaking for them i would sign a boogie uh but right now i don't think they needed demarcus cousins as much as demarcus cousins need them mm. this season so it'd be kind of interesting if they actually do that a little, this early yeah because <laughs> yeah i have people in my comments because like you know you talk about james wiseman's injury but even Kavan Looney, Kavan Looney, I think, missed the start of this season with an injury as well. And I think he had a couple issues throughout the season. There's no guarantee that either of those guys stay healthy. And, I mean, I, I don't think you'd want to run Kavan Looney more than 23 minutes per game as a center because he's really there to do a couple of things. He's there to screen, uh, I guess, interior defense as well. But it's mainly... Dude, his screen plays, like the amount of screen plays he sets for Steph Curry and, you know, all these other players is just so ridiculous in my opinion. But honestly, he's not really a high usage guy on offense. 
I think that's why they want to get James Wiseman fit and healthy. But even with James Wiseman, I feel like there's a lot of question marks. And I have a really bad feeling for the Warriors that they're going to come across a team like Minnesota where eventually their small ball might not always work. You know what I mean? I feel Mm -hmm. like what Minnesota have done is actually pretty clever. And I think we'll get into that in a bit. I saw your comment on my video the other day. I I know, I think you disagree with me on this, but I I feel like, yeah, DeMarcus Cousins on the Warriors would be another really good guy. And if you want to go down that road, that's there. But even bringing in Jermichael Green helps out with the small ball lineup. I think they've got, I could honestly see Jermichael Green maybe playing some minutes at the five next season. Of course, defensively, it probably won't work really at all. But I think he was a good get, considering they also lost a lot of players in free agency. They lost like five or six or something. So I think Green was a a very good addition. Do you see him maybe playing center minutes next year? Or maybe a a Jonathan Kaminga, does he play center minutes next year? I think for the Warriors, the Warriors are going to play a lot of intriguing lineups, right? Like every year, they test somebody's ability to kind of stretch at that power forward. And sometimes Ziggy, sometimes it's, um, you know, a by at least at, at that five position. You know what I'm saying? So, go to state is not scared to pitch you at the five or four. But, but the where I'm a little, I stray a little bit from you. I do not think go to state is necessarily going to have a problem with a team like Minnesota. Um, the reason being is because, like, yeah. Um, that big boy lineup can be a shocker. Like we still, we do, we are starting to see some teams kind of secretly build their version of a big boy. You got the Cavs, you got the Raptors, Go Cavs. <laughs> now Minnesota. Yeah. But um, the one thing that kind of scares me about Minnesota right now with their big boy lineup is that if Golden State were to use their small ball lineup, the question is, will Minnesota defense be as consistent as Golden State offense will be? with their mm. small ball lineup. And I believe Jermichael Green, he doesn't have to average 20, but as long as he gets them like six to 10 and makes some defenders nervous, I think that's that's his job right there. As yeah. well as uh, a Jonathan Kaminga, if they pin him there. Because honestly, I think Cat can actually run at some fours, but I just don't trust Rudy Gobert running out in the perimeter with some some threatening power fours or centers. Yeah. Right, and that's the question. Like if, if Rudy Gobert... Uh, could take his defense to a whole nother level this season, and he gets the confidence to actually guard those um, those stretches <laughs> of the four of the fives. Then I yeah. think you got a you got a whole nother situation. But yeah, until then, I think he might be all right. <laughs> you got to say might be okay. I, I, pre- I pretty much agree with everything you said, but I've got a bit of a call here. All right, this might be a big call, mm. but this is one I'm prepared to make. I think the Minnesota Timberwolves could almost get that first seed in the Western Conference next year. I think they could 100% compete for it. I am that high on the Minnesota Timberwolves, and I've got a couple of reasons why. First of all, they were able to make the, was it eighth or seventh seed this year? Right? They were, yeah. They were there, yeah? Seven, now, since, yeah. since they, let's just say it's seventh. Since they finished seventh, Not only have they brought in the best interior defender in the league in, you know, Rudy Gobert, but they've also moved Carl Anthony Towns to the four, which is going to make their defense 10 times bigger, or better rather, because for anyone who's watched Timberwolves games, they would know this guy does not try when it comes to interior defense. He literally will see D'Angelo Russell. He will probably tell D'Angelo Russell to go guard his man because he doesn't want to guard the center position. He will move over to the four. He's a better perimeter defender than he is interior defender. Then you've also got Anthony Edwards, six foot seven shooting guard, who, you know, he's at the two now. Like to have a dude that's six foot seven at the two that can defend at an elite level. Yeah, that is that is scary. Then not just six foot seven for real. Yeah, six foot seven. Not just that. (laughs) They improved their depth like 10 times more than what they had last season. Like, their depth wasn't very good last season. They were able to make the seventh seed. They brought in dudes this year. You know, they they got they brought in Bryn Forbes, who I think is a solid two. I think he's an underrated guy. 
they've brought in um damn i don't know why i've forgotten his name uh he's like the slowest player in the nba i don't know why i forgot his name oh s- slow-mo kyle yeah, anderson kyle anderson yeah they brought yeah. in him who's a solid dude now off the bench Jaden mcdaniels finally gets to start he's a six foot nine small forward that is getting better at three-point shooting every single season Every single factor about this team improved. You know, their bench, their depth, their interior defense, their perimeter defense, the all-star caliber players that they've got. The ball is in D'Angelo Russell's hands now, like fully in his hands now to run the point. I see this team, you know, definitely competing for that one seed. My issue is the playoffs. Can they do something in the playoffs? That's what... I need to see, you know, but that's where I got to ask you, is, is there anything I've said out of line and can the Timberwolves do well in the playoffs, you know? Because it, it is a big question because we don't really know. We haven't seen a whole lot of them. Yeah. But I'm it, it, dep- it depends on the development this season. I think like, uh, I do think they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, but if you look at that, a lot of those teams, it's going to be really tough right now because it's a lot of decent teams. It's not as bad as it is in the East. It's a mm. lot more Eastern teams that's going to be fire. But for Minnesota, I think they can I think they can get in there. I don't know if they're going to be as high because you got the Clippers that's going to have a resurgence. They're potentially going to have a Kawhi at some point in Paul George. Yeah, but everyone and their they, dad on the Clippers gets injured. They do, but it might be different. Well, they're going to want it to be mm-hmm. different. Mentally, they're going to want to be different. Um, Lakers, gonna, they're going to want to prove a point. Golden mm. State is also going to want to say, hey, we're still here. Remind y'all we're still here. You got Denver coming back. Um, you know, you got the Grizzlies, <laughs> who's who got a lot to show. You got Phoenix, who just got DA back, um, who's going to also want to show that, you know, this wasn't a fluke. So you got a lot of top-tier Western teams that's coming back or trying to say, hey, remember me. Yeah. So, per seed, that might be – that's going to be a tough thing to do. They're going to yeah. have to be on their P's and Q's, no doubt. Do you think now, they can in terms compete of, for it? Can they compete for that one seed? Because that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're going to be the one seed. I'm saying they're going to compete for it. And they're going to try and get there. And I think they could for sure do top three. Because there are teams there. Don't. There are teams like Phoenix are good. Memphis will be back up there. I feel like the Warriors might get a couple less wins this year. Dallas will be back up there. Utah will be for sure sliding. They're, yep. they're going to for sure slide. Yep. Denver will get a couple more wins. But honestly, Denver are bringing back, you know, Michael Porter Jr. is whatever. Then you've got Jamal Murray who's going to come back and be healthy. They're gonna they're gonna win some more games, but oh, my, and you got the Pelicans too. Yeah, but that's if there's a lot of ifs and buts with the Pelicans as well. You know, my my thing is though, have Minnesota improved more than what Denver and Dallas have? Because Denver bring back all these guys and they'll get a bunch more wins, but can Minnesota jump them in that regard? It depends on how well they develop this this off season. Yeah. Now, which is which I think that's the million dollar question because if they develop, I, I can kind of see it. But looking at this Western team, I, I'm saying I think one, two, and three is going to be Golden State Grizzlies and maybe the Suns this Ooh. season. You don't think that uh, changes up at, at all because Golden State did lose a lot of depth players. They did, but then they also acquired some, and then also, I think, also I think they, I think they're strategically they they know like they yeah. they did lose uh, what Toscano they lost who they lost uh, Otto Payton, Porter Otto Porter Bayer Lates the left to go yep. overseas. He could have for sure had an. I reckon he had another couple offers in the NBA, but he chose to go overseas. Uh, I wonder what made him do that too. Yeah, Damian <laughs> Lee. That's another one. Yeah. He left as well. Yeah. And I feel like... Uh, Gary a... Payton. Yeah, yeah, that's one. That, yeah. Andre Iguodala. Looks like he's retiring. They Not did sure lose... about that one. They but, did yeah. lose some key role players, but I think they're they going to be fine. Their young core they... is definitely going to show up. 
that will be the thing that. But I, I don't know what I see. Goal, I see Golden State being a big playoff team again next season. More, more of a playoff team than like a regular season team. You know what I mean? Like they finished what third in the regular season this year. I could see them maybe going down to like fifth, but still being like the best team in the NBA somehow. If that makes any sense. You know, that's just like what I feel like Golden State could definitely do. I think they're going to be a bit more chilled and relaxed next season. But the, I, I just feel like Minnesota, they've got so many players that have something to prove. And Anthony Edwards is, he's going to make that jump to being one of the best players in the NBA. And the the three that they have, like, this is even without D'Angelo Russell doing what he could do. Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, and Anthony Edwards are possibly three top 20 players in the league. Especially if Anthony Edwards jumps how we think he could. They could have three top 20 plays. And then you still got D'Lo, who's a top 50 guy. So, I don't know. I just think they're stacked. Their team is very stacked. The depth's there. The all-star power. The defense. The offense is there now. <laughs> I'm not so... I, I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be a top five. Hmm. I just don't think they're going to be top three. I yeah. I still – because I don't think – because even if you – let's say hypothetically, let's say you are right with the Pelicans, right? They got a lot yeah. more questions. Even though I think the Pelicans from top to bottom actually is the most complete roster. Um, You're pulling the 2K on us. You're going to have them finish as the first aid. I swear I don't Pelicans think they're going to be <laughs> – I don't think they're going to be first, but I just – I really – because, I mean – Side note, like when you look at the Pelicans, like it was like they were so deep <laughs> when yeah. it came to the draft. It really did not matter who the Pelicans drafted this this past draft because they literally had everyone they needed. Like you had Zion, you had Ingram, you had uh, Valachunas, you had CJ McCollum, you had Herbert Jones, you had Devontae Graham. Like you, ha- you had Jackson Hayes that you really didn't give as much tick, but he was Whenever you put him on the floor, he was a very nice, exciting player. You know, like you had <laughs> from top to bottom, you really had players that complemented everyone on the team and for long term yeah. to a you know extent, which is where I don't necessarily believe Minnesota has that type of depth yet. Um, but I do think they have they have high upside. The only problem is I want to see it first. Yeah. And I'm just not so because I feel like, yeah, I do think they're going to be competitive. Defensively, this might be one of their best defensive teams we've seen <laughs> in a very long time. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I I fear I fear what they're going to be long term. Because I actually <laughs> – how I feel like – you know how you said Golden State is going to be like, you know, an OK season team and in the playoff they're going to explode. Yeah. I actually think it's going to be the opposite for Minnesota. Yeah. I think they're going to be a really good season team, a top five season team, and then when the playoff come, they're going to fizzle out. I think about maybe second round is where you're going to really start saying, uh, uh, I, I think Minnesota either need another year of development or they need another two or three role players yeah. to really – get them over. But. I, I agree with that. I honestly, as well, think the playoffs could be where they they struggle too. But like the Pelicans, they made every single Washington Wizard fan cry because they took <laughs> Dyson Daniels, bro. That was not expected. They just took Dyson Daniels, a dude that's six foot seven, can guard one through three, can ball handle and play mate, and has shown that his shooting is improving drastically as well. And he's already getting comparisons to, like, a better defensive, maybe less playmaking version of what Josh Giddy was last season. You know, six foot seven, six foot eight type of guard that can really move across the floor. And who did Washington end up with? Johnny Davis. I feel bad. Mm -hmm. That guy has a porn star name. I'm going to be completely honest. Johnny Davis is a porn star name. And I don't know about that pick. Now Bradley Beal is going to play the one next season. And that is that has trouble written all over it for the Washington Wizards. I bet you ten right now before the season starts. If Bradley Bill uh, runs the point guard, I promise you they're not making it the playoffs <laughs> at all. They're not making a play in. They're not making it at all. That's not gonna work. Wow, it, Bradley, I can't, I can't believe how bad the Wizards. They they had a very unfortunate draft. Like they just got messed up, dude. Like they could have. Yeah, they could have had so many players and they ended up with 
Johnny Davis. I don't know. It's a tough pick. Very tough pick. Pelicans fans are just sitting there smiling at their keyboards or at their computer screen right now because Dyson Daniels will be a beast for them. Does he start, though? Does Dyson Daniels start? No. Yeah, because I think they'll run McCollum at the one and they'll run Herbert Jones at the two, right? Yeah. And even if they don't, they probably going to have I, – I still don't think they're going to they gonna start him back early. But, yeah, I, I do – and, yeah, actually, yeah, CJ probably is going to be at the one because, really, uh, I think Graham might be, be on his way out. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the only position. The only position they're not. It's not locked in yet, but uh, that point guard position. But yeah, I think yeah, CJ McCollum, Herbert Jones for that defense, and you know, stretch. Um, or you might even be able to put Ingram there, and then um, yeah. uh, Zion, and you know, etc. Valachunas, and then whoever you want to you know place there. I feel like they got another power forward for some reason, or another big. They might. Just be, well, when they got CJ, I think Devontae Graham ended up playing like 15 minutes a game or something yeah. really bad. And like, I definitely feel like he he needs to be on the out at the moment. But I don't know. He could always be a nice spark dude off the bench if they really wanted yeah. to. And I don't even know what team Devontae Graham should necessarily go to. I actually don't know. That would be a really, really weird one. But, yeah, you know, there's a, a couple of things, too. You know, I want to talk about Portland in a second because we had a <laughs> we had an interesting conversation. I feel like both of us ended up being wrong about Portland. For those of you who didn't see one of the podcasts we had a little bit ago, me and Relly had a... <laughs> I see your face. You're just, like, dead. We had a conversation about Portland. You said they were going to trade Dame and rebuild. I said they were going to keep Dame, bring in Jeremy Grant, and bring in a bunch of other players and contend. I think we both ended up being wrong because they didn't bring in anywhere near the players I thought they were going to bring in. They brought in Jeremy Grant and said, all right, I'm going to head out now, and didn't touch the team. Like, you could have, there were so many dudes out there. TJ Warren signed with the Nets, like, on a minimum. Couldn't you have offered that guy six million bucks to come to your team or something and at least try something. Why? What is the issue with the Portland Trailblazers, Riley? Tell me right now. It's Portland. That's why I, I thought in my, in, in my mind, in my logical thinking cap, that Damian Lillard would get traded this offseason. But you know what they did instead? They said, you know what? We're going to look at it for any assignments. We're going to give you a little bit. We're going to give you a lot of money. Then we're yeah. going to go to Nurkic. We're going to give you a little bit of an extension, too. Why did Nurkic you know, get a $90 million deal? Who was offering Nurkic that much money besides maybe a Chinese team or something? Ain't no uh, one was offering Nurkic $90 million for four years. Well, I don't get it. They should. There were rumors that they were going to offer that guy a pay cut, and then he was going to take it because he really liked it in Portland. But I guess even he saw, he was like, damn, you guys ain't going to sign nobody. Fine, just give me the money and we'll call it a day. He barely plays the season. He plays like two games and he's injured. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Who's going to play center next year for the Portland Trailblazers if Yusuf Nurkic goes down with a sore butt cheek or something? You know what I mean? I don't think, I don't even think they care. It's too, <laughs> like, and that's the, that's the problem. That's why I was like, that's why all those, that a couple weeks ago, I thought Portland was going to move the way he did because it's like, I think Portland knows Portland is going to be Portland. But what I underestimated is Portland overrides thinking. They 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 <laughs> they override anything logical. Mm. So when they made the moves they made, Jeremy Grant, all right, okay, I see. But then you only did that and you extend all these players who's never proved to do anything Yep. With or without Damian Lillard, and you give them all this money for no reason, and then you didn't even add any other players to like you didn't add a DeAndre Ayton, you didn't you didn't even attempt to try to get a DeAndre Ayton. No. You didn't attempt to get a TJ Warren. You didn't attempt you didn't attempt to get any any of the top ten or top twenty free agents. Shoot, you didn't even try to get the role players in it. Honestly, still, and you telling me and you're telling the Portland fans that we're gonna be competitive next season. Absolutely not, because like I told my friends, Ooh. if you're paying Whoa. a Freddie Simons, 
a hundred million dollars. What you basically just told me with a straight face is that a Fernie Simons at the bare minimum is going to be close to CJ McCollum or better. Unfortunately, a Fernie Simons is not going to be nowhere near CJ McCollum because the only time a Fernie Simons truly touched those CJ numbers is when CJ and Dane was not on the floor, which is a problem because the player that's really going to have to play better offensively is Damian Lillard, and he's been kind of struggling, well, really this season, because he's had no help. And now I'm telling my friends right now, too, that player y'all just signed and, uh, and um, Jeremy Grant, I promise you this season, because of how poorly y'all made y'all team, how poorly y'all just constructed this offseason, in one year, y'all going to almost be saying Jeremy Grant is overrated because of how garbage this team is and how how over the top y'all going to be making Jeremy Grant in his role because y'all going to be expecting Jeremy Grant to essentially give y'all 20 plus a game and Jeremy Grant is not that type of player to be a second option because that's basically <laughs> what he's going to have to be on this team. Really? A second what option. Done? What this... are you doing to me, bro? All the Portland fans are going to dislike the hell out of this Clips video, man. I'm sorry, <laughs> but Port, like, at some point, <laughs> if you're a Portland fan, you oh, have no. to come to the realization that this team is worse than the team we just seen last year. Worse. <laughs> you signed a Nurkic who's, who's – you might as well say he's not playing this season. A Fernie oh, Simons man. is, like, <laughs> r- really? A Fernie – like, it is so many other role players that could do what a Fernie Simons do for half the cost. And then Jeremy Grant, all right. Eh. You know the, you know but the is that really meme where they're like, stop, stop, he's already dead? Yeah, like, this That's is... Not... Man. All right, all right. I got a couple of things. I got a couple of things. I do disagree I'm with a couple of things. First of all, I don't think Portland are going to be total crap. I still think Portland are going to be a playing team. They, yeah, they, they will be a playing team. But they they also did get better. They did get better. Because CJ so? had... Yeah, CJ had a lot of injuries for Portland last year. It didn't seem like it was really there anymore. Damian Lillard, I don't think, was necessarily trying as much. Their depth really, really sucked. Like, it was one of the worst depth teams in the league. But now, you do keep Anthony Simons, who, look, I agree, did not play. He only plays his best when Dame and that are not playing. But I think he can work into it. You still brought in Jeremy Grant, who, first of all, they need to contract extend. Got to get that done. Or well, that trade was pointless at this point. Get that deal done. Jeremy Grant is still a dude that's going to put up 17 and good perimeter defense for him. If Nurkic stays healthy, you do have a solid center there. Josh Hart is still a good small forward. They brought in Gary Payton, remember? That's a really good defender off the bench. Drafted Shane Sharp. Don't know about that one. <laughs> Don't know about that one. And then I'm kind of done. There's not a whole lot more going on with this team. (laughs) But honestly, it's still a plane. It's still a plane. But you need a center. I don't know who they need to bring in DeMarcus Cousins or something. But he wants to start. I guarantee you DeMarcus Cousins has gotten a couple offers. But he has declined all of them because they would have been, you're going to be our third string center, right? That maybe is why he didn't accept the Warriors off. Because maybe they've told him we want to start. James Wiseman, even though you'll play similar minutes to him, we still want to start James Wiseman. Maybe that's why he declined their offer. But you need to bring in someone. JaVel McGee was right there. He signed for $9 million a season. He would have been a good pickup, you know what I mean? And I feel like you could have done a sign and trade to make something like that happen. You've got players like Keon Johnson and those type of guys who are on around $4 million that you're probably not going to play a whole lot next season. They're not as bad as you think, but they didn't do enough this season. I think they're kind of stacked on guards. They have like seven guards on this roster, and only four of them are probably going to play. And then the forward depth is okay. Josh Hart, who is arguably a wing. So that's the that's the first issue. And then you still got Jeremy Grant that's there as well. And... It's just not right. They still need a backup center. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they definitely need to do that. And I don't know. It's just not very good. 
I, I don't the know. The only I don't thing know. I say everybody that, man, the only Trump card they have, because we don't know, they, they say he's a mystery. He could be, <laughs> maybe he might be their next player. It's Shaden Sharp. Maybe he uh, turns into a star and he breaks everything I just said today. But unless that happens, they literally have Damian and a team of role players right now. Yeah. And okay. I do not see – if I give Dame the benefit of the doubt, yeah, they make the play. But if Dame at any point gets hurt this season, it's over. It's, we're going to mm. see the same season we just witnessed last season. They're not making it. This is not a good team at all at no stretch of the imagination. I'm sorry. Yes, you got uh, um, uh, Josh Hart. He can do something. He's – different than what y'all have had before I, I respect that if Freddie Simons I am not I'm not you're not gonna sell me on that player Ooh. he's especially <laughs> when you trade you literally traded CJ McCollum under the intent that you had a Freddie Simons who could either a be close to CJ or potentially better than CJ I don't see it because his numbers literally only jumps up when both of those high value players and Damon CJ is off the floor and you, like I said, you still got to remember you got uh, Josh Hart, who's gonna get some touches. I mean, you wouldn't have traded for him if he wasn't gonna get some touches. Jeremy Grant, of course, is gonna get the ball, and Nurk is probably not gonna be on the floor anyway. Mm. So I just don't see it unless Shannon Sharp develops a season or Josh Hart decides this season because you're not gonna either you're not gonna sell me on Gary Pay- Gary Payne either because it's like on Golden State. Even though he was a really great role player, he was like he was like the seventh or eighth man on the rotation, which is you know it's a good thing because the Warriors was deep. But it's like for Portland, what is what is truly your expectations of Gary Payton for Portland, who who don't have a lot of players really established yeah. other than Dame? Like Dame is the only player on this team. You can straight face say, all right, we know what he's going to give you on a day-to-day basis. You can't truly say that with Jeremy Grant. <laughs> you can't say that with Nurkic because he's not going to play. Like, he, he's just not yeah, going to wrong. <laughs> he's not going to play. <laughs> and then a Fernie wrong. Simons, you can't really say that either. You can't, well, you can't say that with him either because the only time you really seen him actually play good is when both of his stars wasn't on the floor. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> the only player you can kind of – push that needle for is Josh Hart because we've seen what he was doing with uh when Ingram was still there when Ingram wasn't there um what he was trying to do and then what he started to do once he got when the trade happened he was still balling all right but outside of that I just don't think Portland right now is a good enough team to uh to truly be a contender for the apes for the play-in I mean you got to give Dame the benefit of that I respect that for anybody in the comments is going to roast me. I'm sorry, uh, CHP, for this. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if Dame at any point gets hurt like he did last season, it's over. It's over. You might as well get the assembling your trades because Dame should Ooh. not. Y'all, the- need to get, y'all need to get everything y'all can, rebuild yeah. this roster like y'all should have did this season because y'all not going to keep this talent. And uh, God, like you said, God forbid, if Jeremy Grant walks. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if it's Dame that you have to worry about mainly. Because if Dame gets injured, you've still got Simons, who'll go off, right? You've, you've got him. You've got all these players. They've got guard depth. They've got an extreme amount of guard depth. One might argue they could have a top 10. I don't know. I think that's pretty solidified. They've probably got a top 10 guard depth in the league, right? Like, you think about it, you've got Gary Payton, Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, um, old mate that they've just drafted. Young players like Keon Johnson, Josh Hart can still play the two. The guard depth is extremely good. But they've got the worst big man depth in the league. And I think you're more you're more worrying about Yusuf Nurkic going down. Because who's going to run their starting center? Me? Am I getting a call up? Because I'm pretty yeah. sure I could probably ball out more than Drew Eubanks, who was apparently still on the roster. Uh, Forgot about him. Yeah. yeah, I don't know who their backup center actually is supposed to be. Is Drew Eubanks a... I, I think I guess, he is supposed to be the, uh, I guess <laughs> they their backup, backup center. I don't yeah. know about that one, man. <laughs> I don't know about that one. That's probably not not the best 
thing. But I think I'm a bit more high on Portland than you are. I'd probably still got them as like the 10th seed, the ninth seed at the moment. Because I still think they jump. They jump mm-hmm. above a couple of teams in the West. Like, you've still got one of the best players in the NBA. Right now, they're better than Houston. They're better than Oklahoma. They're better Is than they better Utah. than Sacramento? They're better than Sacramento. That's four teams right there. They're better than San Antonio. That's five teams. They'll jump to that 10th or 9th seed, I reckon. I think they get... they. They're, they're better than those. But unless Sacramento, like, I don't know, do something like relocate to Las Vegas or something this season <laughs> or relocate back to Cincinnati, then I don't know. But my end, my final thing I will say about Portland is, is they could still very well surprise us. We haven't really taken into account that if everything goes right, this could be like a random fifth seed. Like if Nurkic was to actually stay healthy, all of their players were to stay healthy, right? You've still got a solid eight or nine man rotation that's pretty good in the NBA. They could definitely jump up to a fifth seed. My worry Ooh. is the Portland Trailblazers, if everything, if everything goes right, if they're all healthy, that's if Nurkic gets back to what he used to be. My worry is they've got the worst 10 to 15 man rotation nearly in the <laughs> NBA. So that's why they won't ever get to being a fifth seed because as soon as someone like Nurkic goes down, you've got Drew Eubanks as your starting center and I'll probably get signed on a 10 day to play that as their backup. So it's not happening. I'm saying 10th seed, 9th seed, they'll get. I honestly really had high hopes for this team. I thought if they were going to pick up like a TJ Warren or a Kyle, a Kyle Anderson as well. Players like this, they could have for sure be like a six seed, right? But they never got there. They <laughs> just didn't get there at all. I don't know what they're doing. It's the moment such... I seen them have KD in a Portland jersey, I knew they was doomed. <laughs> that's that's all I had to see. Dame was just <laughs> trying for anything, man. He was really trying. They could have yeah, tried to get KD. They could have tried to get DeAndre Ayton, and they just didn't try for like either of them. Because they, they realized who they was. They yeah. remember well, they was Portland. At one That's stage, why. they had the assets too. They had a Simons on like a sign and trade right there. They had so many of those dudes. Like a Josh Hart could still gotten traded. The guy that they just drafted. I don't know why I've forgotten his name. They had the assets. They also have 100 billion first round picks in the future. Because they never have traded any of them away. Man. I'm going to be honest with you. Once that Rudy Gobert trade happened. All those assets you you think Portland had, I think that went out the window. Ooh, for a lot of teams too. Well, I'm I'm gonna be serious because once once Rudy Gobert got four first rounds and a couple of players actually, I think yeah, I think I think that broke. <laughs> I think that broke a lot of teams, and I think somebody actually said that to a couple of execs, anonymous executives anonymous around executives. the league, yeah, <laughs> where they was like, yeah, I think uh, the trade market's broken after. Uh, that trade and the Jajante Murray trade, what they really wanted to say that Rudy Gobert, because got now mad overpaid. <laughs> yeah. So KD, it might take uh, 12 first round picks at this point. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when they got KD, like when that, when they got Rudy Gobert, sorry, that, I mean, they also got like Jared Vanderbilt, Pat Bev, and all of these type of players. And, People are saying Pat Bev is going to be a buy- on the buyout market, right? If Utah really wanted, they could hold on to Pat Bev for a little while and could actually get something out of him, like, even if they just yeah. stick him out, you know? But I guess I'll ask you this. Before I get into the Lakers and maybe even the Knicks, I really want to talk about the Lakers for a second. I want to mm-hmm. ask you, where do you think Kevin Durant is going to get traded to? And what is Kevin Durant worth now in the NBA? Now that we know Rudy Gobert is worth everyone and their dad. Uh, on top of that, eight first round picks or some, some ridiculous thing. I think it was four or five first round picks. But what do you actually think KD is worth now in the NBA? Now the worth is where we get a little tricky, right? Because like yeah. I said, I truly think Rudy Gobert broke it before. And then with the exec saying, yeah, I think the market is atrocious now. I think 
when it, if we're talking about picks, it's way beyond four picks. Like when you say twelve, <laughs> even though I know people exaggerate because it's like it that that's a lot. I almost think it comes close to that to truly because I mean you just you just seen last week they called Minnesota and asked for Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards and more first round picks attached to that confidently. So it's like if they think they're giving up, they by a default, they would have to give up Ant Cat and let's let's say six first round yeah, picks. That's fair. Yep. That's, that's what I heard too. That is a lot. You know, I know it's KD because I mean whoever gets them is probably gonna be finals contenders are pretty close to it, or at least in a conversation of it if they don't make it. But I think KD's worth is literally like you can't really, you don't really know. Like a really, you just know it's high. Mm. <laughs> it's higher. It's higher at the bare minimum. You know it's higher than four, four first rounds, and you know it is in terms of players. It's higher than at least four players for KD. At least, so you can at least say like four players and five or six first round picks. And it's kind of asking, will a team be willing to do that? Because two of those five players or four players has to be either all-stars or really, really close to it. And for a team like that, it's like, why? Like, they're trying to attach that with KD. Because <laughs> you basically about to gut out your roster getting Kevin Durant. And it's like, is it really worth it at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. Especially if you're not a free agent attraction. So you're like, you're not getting – you're not really replacing that player that you traded for KD. So it's going to be a hard thing. Now, in terms of that second question you asked, like who is going to going to trade for him? Honestly, I don't know because I don't think KD is going to get traded this season. Um, I think KD and, – and that's what also breaks it. KD is signed for four, for three more years. Like after this season, three more years. Like he, he got that, a full contract. You, isn't it only one more? Who, for KD? Only one, yeah. No, I no. He extended last season. Did he? Yeah, he extended last season. Because I know Kai Ray's <clears throat> only got one more. Yeah, and then he, he thought Kyrie was going to end up getting extended last season, but they didn't do it, and he was supposed to get extended this season, which KD was already extended for the four years. Yeah, which is why this is why his this is why KD's situation gets tricky because Brooklyn doesn't have to trade him this season. Mm. Shoot, K, they don't have to trade KD next season. It's just a matter of. A lot of people hoping that they would trade KD to try to get them to bully them into a deal. Yeah. But Brooklyn, for the first time ever, you have a top two talent who really has no choice in where he where he can go right now because he's he signs. Like, which is why when you talk about how many picks they can get, they can get full return for KD. This is why Brooklyn is looking for full return for KD because I mean, he's not a one year rental. <laughs> Even if KD decides he's going to make a list, it doesn't really matter because he's not a one-year rental. So yep. whatever team he gets traded to, he has to play for him. And how the, when it gets to that CBA, <laughs> a lot of these team owners is about to make sure these players don't have as much power as they had these past couple of seasons. So the dominoes is not in KD's favor right mm. now. So uh, the team he's going to go on, I'm not sure. I don't think it's going to be Phoenix. I don't think it's going to be Miami. Yeah, I think it's going to be like a dark horse, small market team who yep. just have a lot of picks. My my favorite, though, if it's not a small market team, I do think Golden State. That's why I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Realistically. <laughs> they realistically, have the most assets in the whole league yeah. to get Kaede. They got the most assets. They got the most developed assets, and they have the most logical ones. Yeah. And this is where Golden State kind of came at the right time. Everybody developed at the right time. They got the right potential because they could realistically, they got the picks. They really never used their picks at all. And they got Jordan Poole. That would be reasonable for them. Kaminga, James Wiseman, and et cetera. Like, they have the young guys to give to them and the mm. picks. And they're already a team that understand what they can do with KD if they give up those many assets because they've done it before. Yeah. So I think Golden State, 
the number one option would be Golden State, but number two would be like those third, those small market teams who you would have never seen coming. Do you know that Jordan Poole has still not been extended, by the way? Are yes. You aware, are you aware of that? Which is I, very interesting that I feel like no one is talking about. Why is, is no why. one talking about that? <laughs> you know, honestly, it's crazy you say that because like a week ago, I was talking to my friend. I'm like, damn. I wonder, didn't Jordan Poole get $100 million or something, you know, yep. you know, all that stuff? He was like, $100 million? Why didn't you do that? I'm like, he didn't get extended? He was like, no. I, I, I made a like, video oh. on it because they said it was, like, set in stone. It was going to happen. And then it was, like, Golden State were just, like, they backed out. <laughs> they, like, pulled out of the deal. They didn't want to – I don't know. And, okay, so first of all, before I get into, like, the Warriors, and you said a small market team, which I think was really interesting because it so happens they said a small market team is ready to give up nearly everything today which I'll talk about in a second. But does DeAndre Ayton, Mikel Bridges campaign and eight first round picks or so, surely that gets it done. Like surely you would think eight first round picks. That Dude, that's eight years, eight years of first round picks. That would have to get it done, right? You can get it done. Unfortunately, Phoenix would probably – they would have to wait till like, December or January to even truly discuss it. Well, well if they yeah, wanted to accept it. Yeah. Aiton also, yeah. to the extended, has a clause in his contract, I think, that allows him not to get traded until, like, I think very early on the season, which it, it seems very odd that the Suns did jump into that. I don't feel like – I mean, I know Indiana were – offering him that deal but oh damn phoenix really got stuffed over didn't they maybe they didn't jump into it too early because i guess indiana were you know they, they, were they had no choice deal. yeah they had no choice they, at the end of the day they had no that's what i was telling people yeah. i'm like y'all y'all realize like because i know a lot of people saying da is gonna leave i'm like their sons is not letting da walk for free like yeah. even if even if it's as simple as a sign and trade they're not letting a restricted free agent Lee, like the last time we seen something close to that was Zach Levine four years ago. He tried to try to go to Sacramento and Chicago was like, no, <laughs> you're coming back here. Like, that's not going to happen. I mean, you don't, obviously it's not going to happen because you don't want Bismack Biombo as your starting center, right? Like you kind of want to stay away from that. Um, I wonder what Indiana were trying to do there. Like, because they still had Miles Turner and all these other players contracted, like Goga Batadze. All these other big men, Jalen Smith, I think they brought in as well. So many of these guys, and they just like randomly threw DeAndre Ayton a mega four year, $100 million billion deal. I don't know what, that was kind of out of pocket, but the team that they <laughs> said were interested. Now, I can't remember who reported on this. I'm not even going to check because, like, I don't think this is going to happen anyway. But they said the Washington Wizards were the small market team that had inquired about Kevin Durant the most recently. And it got Same me that. thinking, yeah, Rui Hachimura, Danny Avdia, Corey Kispert, a couple other players maybe, eight first-round picks or something. You'd think that would, Brooklyn would look at that. But then, like, if you're the Wizards, though, oh, man, I don't know. Kristaps, Honest- Kuzma, Bradley Beal. Oh, you'd have to throw on Johnny Davis as well into that deal. You got like th- you could have Kuzma, Bradley. You'd have Kuzma, Bradley Beal, and Kristaps and KD and like no one else. It'd be a weird team. Yeah, you would literally have to give up the entire roster because honestly, <laughs> and even then, I still don't even think Brooklyn would say yeah to that. Yeah, like especially if they just asked for Anthony Edwards and Cat, and yeah. then they just told Phoenix. If you want Katie, you want Devin Booker. Like, <laughs> like, do you understand the, the the mindset of Brooklyn right now? Like, that means if Kuzma was a lot more – like, if Kuzma – that means Kuzma would have to be averaging, like, tw- let's say, like, 20-plus, and Denny would have to be averaging 20-plus, and then they would probably be like, all right, we we'll want him, him. Yeah, and then we want him, Yeah, him, just him, to him, think him. about – you know how crazy that – like, that is – so they would literally – so for Brooklyn, if they were to take all those players you just named, 
they feel like their mindset is they would have to be re uh, compensated in more first round picks, which a lot of teams don't have. And I think I think they said Miami was actually trying to acquire more picks. Yeah, they did for the deal. So maybe Miami can get it done, but even them, I don't even really see them having that. Who do they have to the trade to get first round picks to make that happen? <laughs> also, I feel like Bam is low key overrated now. Did you watch Bam out of bio in the playoffs? He was yeah. not that good. He was not that good at all. I mean, Jarrett Allen was better, way better in the end of last season than Bam Adebayo ever was. But no one would even think about saying that Jarrett Allen could be a better player than Bam Adebayo. Think about that real quick. And Mm. I don't know, like, how are you going to get more first-round picks? Who are you going to trade? That's a good question because they lost P.J. Tucker, so it's not like he's... Um, <laughs> and that's a great question. Like, cause I like even they wrote like it's not like they're maybe Victor, maybe yeah, but he just got but, signed, I, but he's not so even they signed. Can't. No, no, they signed him yeah. two they years, every eight million a year. Yeah, sixteen million so dollar contract. So who else is on that bench? So they can't trade Cody not- Martin or whatever his name is because he just got signed four years. Tyler Hero can get traded, but that would be a part of the main deal, you would assume. Yeah. Um, Some Duncan guess, Robinson also be in that KD trade, yeah, too. Yeah, I guess, I guess it would be Bam. Like, Bam would be the one I'd think of because you'd be sitting at home like, but yeah, they want to make Bam, Butler, and KD play together. So they're not going to be able to get this done if they don't maybe look at trading Bam out of bar. But then it looks weird because it's like, KD, if Jimmy you do trade Lowry. Bam, is is this gonna be Katie, Jimmy, and Kyle Lowry? Oh, you still got Victor Oladipo there, but I mean you know, Victor Oladipo still, still, but he still wasn't really like he wasn't Victor Oladipo yet. Yeah, like even when he came back, he still was like, I mean, as of right now, he's like a role player. So, and I'm not really high on Kyle Lowry either. If mm, what neither. playoff says. So it's like, so it's basically just Katie, Jimmy Butler. Like, because the amount of asses you're going to have to give, literally give up to get a KD. Yeah. And and then you talking about you making side trades just to get enough assets for the KD trade. Yeah. Well, you so still you got right like Gabe Vincent and those enough. type of players there. That would still be on the roster. And but they is it played good enough? The, well, the other question is, though, as well, is then they would move on to players like DeMarcus Cousins. That is when DeMarcus Cousins gets a deal in the NBA because he wants to start badly. He has made it so clear. I think I've spoken about this twice in this podcast already, but DeMarcus Cousins has made it clear to the teams he will not sign with them unless it's his last resort or he wants he wants to start. That's his main thing. I guarantee you the Denver Nuggets offered him a contract because they already had him on the team. They signed him for the rest of the year and they turned around and signed DeAndre Jordan. You can't possibly tell me that the mm-hmm. Denver Nuggets didn't offer DeMarcus Cousins before they offered De- DeAndre or- Jordan's bum ass a deal mm-hmm. and a couple <laughs> other players here and there. That's why I'm saying DeMarcus Cousins has been offered deals in the NBA and he has declined them. If a team like Miami were to bring in KD, they could also bring in a dude like DeMarcus Cousins to start as their center if they moved on from Bam. Right? That's why I don't think trading Bam would be the worst idea. But everyone's going to look at me like I'm mentally challenged when I feel like Bam could actually 100% get moved. So, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. Because for me, it's a weird thing to say. Because it's like, or to hear. Because it's like, when I watch Miami games, even though I will agree Bam did not play to his contract, he didn't play to the expectation of Bam. Mm. But Bam is a very important piece to their roster because of what he brings. And it showed in that uh in that Boston series because when Bam wasn't playing like Bam, like the confidence in Miami was not there those those last couple games when they got eliminated. Yeah. And it's like like and I fear like if you trade Bam. To get that KD that uh, KD trade done, um, I just 
I don't think you're going to be a locked in favorite unless mm. like, even if you sign boogie, because it's like, like what but Bam then, brings you is a lot. Yeah. Di- well, defensively is a lot different than what boogie brings boogie you at yeah. this point. Like, and I just don't think you can really get like what Bam does. You can't get that from any typical average center in the league mm. right now. That's that's available. And then I don't have the assets to truly get a player to a lesser degree of BAM in the league. So it's kind of like, it's weird because it's like, <laughs> that's why I'm a little afraid for a lot of these teams because it's like, or, and I think a lot of teams are afraid too. If you make this trade for KD, <laughs> do you have enough assets to get the third component or possibly lure in a third component at free agency? Mm. And I'm not sure. Um, a lot of teams feel that way because for Miami, that third component, obviously they want to have the assets to trade for it. So as the question is, would they be able to get that third component in the next offseason? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if All they right. can. But. Let me give you an alternative. Why not sign DeMarcus Cousins and play Bam at the four? Why not try that? Bam at the four, but get the five. Look at? Can Boogie not shoot threes? Am I wrong for saying that Boogie oh, is a decent three-point oh, yeah. shooter? Oh, yeah. he, can, he can pop those things. Yeah. For sure. Confidently. Why Why wouldn't you look at that? He's, I, I don't like Bam at the five as much as some people do. That's my issue. I think Bam plays his best basketball when he's defending Giannis at the four. When he's defending LeBron at the four. That's when I think Bam plays his best basketball. And that's why I thought they were going to bring in Mo Bamba because I thought Mo Bamba would have been perfect for this Heat team. You play Mo Bamba at the five. He can shoot and he can shot block. So question for you there. I got a question for you. Right. Would you rather then have the current day Miami Heat and add Boogie or would you rather trade those assets to get KD and just have Jimmy, KD, and sign Boogie? I'd probably rather trade the assets and make something like that happen. Because I feel like the the only issue with that team is there's probably not a whole lot of three-point shooting and interior defense. But I don't think there's a whole lot of interior defense through times right now. I think the way the Heat play is they switch a lot. They're a very switching team that really works around the perimeter. And that's where Bam Bam often gets switched on the onto the perimeter. And that makes me wonder is like I don't know I don't know if Bam is necessarily being utilized correctly because if you want him to switch onto that perimeter, that's cool and all, but you're always gonna I still feel like you need someone back there, right? And that would have been cool if they had a Demarcus Cousins or a Mo Bamba. But if they were to go out and get Kevin Durant, they're already doing what they're doing with Bam right now. Except you've got Durant now who is an absolutely He's a disgrace offensively. You would just have to work out that interior defense, which I think you could do. I think DeMarcus Cousins is an underrated dude there. Uh, You could still, again, try and bring in some shooters here and there, but they've still got guys like Gabe Vincent and that will still be on the team. Max Struess and those type of guys. It'd still work, but I don't know. This is the part of the podcast where I'm going to get hate because I think it seems childish and outrageous for someone to consider trading Bam. But I honestly think it could for sure be done. And it will be discussed in Miami whether people will like it or not. Especially if they want to get Kevin Durant, you know what I mean? I agree with that second part. I think right now, <laughs> if you want KD, <laughs> you got to be a little bit open to talk. I yeah. mean, and, and I don't think that's really something you should get yelled at. Because, I mean, if you yeah. just see Brooklyn ask for – Devin Booker, exactly, right. Face. Exactly, Anthony right, Edwards yeah. and Cat. I mean, I think it's fair to say, uh, not the way that man. It's fair to say, <laughs> Bam Bam Dwayne would be Dedman, bro. available. <laughs> bro, I don't know Dwayne, what Dwayne Dedman Dwayne Dedman managed in. to get four million a season out of Miami for two years. <laughs> How the hell did that happen? I want to know who his agent is. Find me his agent right now. <laughs> I need him. You almost better than Rich Paul. Actually, no, let me not say that. Rich Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know how the hell Rich Paul couldn't have gotten Dwayne Dedman four million dollars. <laughs> I don't know how that got where that got pulled out from, but I would like. I to don't say, know. 
He might. He might be because he if if, uh, if Rich Paul can get a KCP a no trade clause. I think anything's possible. Where did he get him a no trade clause on? When it, uh, the Lakers. What? What First, happened there? Oh, some, he got him like a two, like a two. What, it was like two year, two year thirty year or two year twenty, and it was a no trade clause. That's why when they tried to when I think it was it was a trade in particular he was trying to get and they couldn't even move him because he had to he had to opt into the no trade clause. Oh well. <laughs> That was that was lucky that the Lakers Rich Paul actually helped the Lakers out there because KCP was low key one of their best players in their <laughs> finals. So that was a yeah lucky that actually worked out. But I want to talk about the Lakers right now because everyone's freaking out. Because let's be honest here, the Lakers roster is cheeks. It is terrible. They did not get that much better if they even got better. I don't care I don't what anyone wants to say to me. Lonnie Walker is not that good. I don't know how he got $7 mil- Who was offering Lonnie Walker $7 million? Answer me that question. But I want to say, if you're a Lakers fan, don't panic. Because I think there is a lot of stuff cooking up right now. Secretly, there is something going on behind the scenes. Because not only have they been talking about a Kyrie Irving for... Um, Russell Westbrook trade, but there's been other stuff too. Kenrick Nunn, I think, is getting moved. I think that is going to be happening because Dennis Schroeder, he commented on a post of like LeBron. LeBron said that's tough or something on something. And Dennis Schroeder said might have to run it back with the, the King thing. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> but for some reason, Dennis Schroeder might be interested in going back to LA. But if I could get Dennis Schroeder on the minimum... There is no point of Kendrick Nunn on $5 million, right? And the way I mean, I, yeah, yeah, the way I look at it is if you were able to bring in Kai Ray and Seth Curry for Westbrook and two to three first round picks, right? And then you mm-hmm. move on from Kendrick Nunn, THT, a protected first, and bring in like and Eric Gordon, you sign Dennis Schroeder in free agency, those are three huge ins. You know what I mean? Eric Gordon, Kyrie Irving, and Dennis Schroeder. All of a sudden, you not only add defense there, but you add a couple of really good shot creators in Schroeder and Kyrie. Gordon's a great three-point shooter to put around LeBron. He still has it in him to be a good defender. Only issue with that Lakers team is you need some big man depth. And I think they should still be going after Miles Turner. But I'm not sure. Am I out of line for saying the Lakers fans should not worry? Because I feel like there's stuff going on behind the scenes right now. I think there's some stuff. I agree with you. I think it is some stuff going on behind the scenes that they have to. But as of right now, (laughs) the Lakers should be panicking. Because because I do not think. if That Kyrie trade, I think that's possibly going to happen. Maybe trade deadline. I don't think – I think Brooklyn is kind of slowing it down with that too. Like, they understand the – because they have to get this deal – if they're going to trade on, they have to get this deal done this year because he can walk for nothing. Yeah. But I think they're still kind of like just in case because if they keep KD, like it's also rumored, hmm. then Kyrie, I think he's going to follow yeah. suit. But uh, because right now – and the reason I say panic because right now <laughs> – when you sign uh, Lonnie Walker and you let Malink Monk go, who was one of two of your only shooters on the roster, and Lonnie Walker is not a shooter at in no stretch of Hold the on, imagination. Can I say, can I say, I don't think letting Malik Monk go was a bad thing. I don't think Malik Monk is what he seems to be. I think Malik Monk only bowled out because the Lakers sucked. He it did that on the Hornets too. He bowled out when they sucked. Then they brought in LaMelo, this and that, and he was barely getting minutes, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think letting Malik Monk go was a bad thing. I just think replacing Malik Monk with Lonnie Walker is very questionable. And that's where I think it's worse. I mean, I hear you. That that do make sense that Malik Monk <laughs> would have his best season with a team that's not really uh, consistent. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, it's a hard sell for me to say uh, losing a shooter and replacing him with a slasher, essentially, 
um, an average slasher at that is decent because because uh, at this because at this point you're hoping to try to trade for Buddy Eric yeah. Gordon, um, etc. And both of those shooters are pretty expensive right now. Mm. Um, so you have and I don't and how Lakers contracts is right now. It's it would be kind of difficult to get that off, especially when you don't have a lot of picks to play with either. So I don't think the Lakers really have a lot of room for error right now. They don't have a lot of players to truly move unless it's a free agent, especially if all of those, those pieces is going to be for a Kyrie trade. Yeah. So. Well, what does Lonnie Walker bring to the Lakers? Like what does Lonnie Walker actually add to that team? Because that's what I've struggled to think. Is Lonnie Walker a good enough defender to have a defensive impact? Is he a good enough shot creator slash slasher to no. add a whole lot there? What do you kind of if you're the Lakers though, what are you banking on Lonnie Walker actually doing for this team? That's tradable. what I don't understand. You think that's what they got him in for? Yeah. Because all those things you just named. Is mm. is he was he really that good defensively to make you better defensively? That's what I, I don't was know. Was he really that good of a slasher know. to like? I don't really think so because both of those things. I mean, I guess you can say yeah, they needed more consistency defensively, but did they truly need those from like they really need those or was those like intangibles they needed from a player? Yeah, like because they really needed what they clearly needed was a player that gave them offense consistently. Mm. Consistent offense. Lonnie Walker has never been that in San Antonio. Ever. No. So you signing him, all right, so if we scratch in the offense, you basically said, all right, Lonnie Walker is decent playmaker, decent defender. Does that make the Lakers better? Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know if it does a whole lot. So that I think that right there kind of answers that question. I don't think Lonnie Walker makes them better. Honestly, I don't I don't really think any of those boxes you would have, Lonnie Walker even fits for the Lakers currently. I don't think Lonnie Walker is a Los Angeles Laker player. Mm. Like, because even hypothetically, let's say the Lakers don't make a trade for Kyrie, they don't make a trade for Eric Gordon, they don't make a trade for Buddy Hill. Do you see this roster being competitive? with Lonnie Walker being someone that's part of it. I mean, yeah, I guess you could say that technically because they got Braun, Russ, and and, uh, and AD. I mean, but I think they're going to still experience the exact same problem they faced last season. They're going to be – they're going to have terrible spacing. They're going to have terrible – or they're going to be worse shooting because they lost a shooter. And now if Carmelo Anthony resigned, which I'm not sure if he resigned No, he hasn't. I don't don't know if they're going to be worse shooting, though. I think that would be better shooting. Because they still – players like Kenrick Nunn and that still came in. Like, you did bring in a Kenrick Nunn, and I think they're still going to be adding a shooter or two. I don't think the Lakers are done in free agency just they yet. They can be. They can be. They sure can be. But the issue is, as well, is they have 14 players on this roster the last time I counted. But a lot of those guys are, expe- like, movable – I don't know why they kept Wenyan Gabriel. Like, I feel like I don't know if his money's guaranteed. You would hope not, because he should be getting waived right now. Those type of guys, they've got about three of them, should all be getting waived, right? They Austin Reeves, I think, is gonna take a bit of a jump next season. I think he could be a solid dude. 24 years of age, good three-point shot on him. The issue I see with the Lakers, though, is and I, I don't think they should be panicking because I still think they're going to be getting Kyrie. I think they are getting Kyrie. I think they'll get Seth Curry, someone like that. My issue is, though, is a player like Eric Gordon, I don't think they're going to be able to get because I think there are teams out there that have better offers. I think the Sixers could come out and give them Matisse Thimble, another player, and um, a protected first-round pick. And I'm not sure if you can do this in the NBA because I don't know how salaries would match there. Yeah, I definitely don't think this is allowed in the NBA. But if, if the, I mean, 
it would be cool if the Rockets could just say, all right, we'll pay half his contract. You can have the other half. You know what I mean? I don't think you can do that at all. They should probably implement something like that. But if they manage to get salaries right and they move Matisse Thimble and stuff like that, who Matisse Thimble is an elite defender who they're not giving the right opportunity to. I think he would do so well in Houston. Then Eric Gordon goes to the Sixers and he would play an even better role than what he might even play on the Lakers. And you might miss out on that opportunity. But again, as I said, I feel like a broken record. Why has no one offered DeMarcus Cousins a starting spot? Here is another team that could offer DeMarcus Cousins a starting position. You start DeMarcus Cousins at that center and you move AD to the power forward. That offense is still really good. You bring in another center that can shoot, right? Anthony Davis as well, his floor spacing, he didn't seem to be able to, you know, do what he wanted to do offensively at that center position this year in the limited time that he played. I think your defense improves from that, moving 8-8 to the four. Your offense could still do something there. If you didn't want to look at DeMarcus Cousins, there's still Miles Turner. I feel like there is so many of these players available. I am right with you, though. I don't know why they haven't made a move yet. What What do you think is stopping them from making a move? Because I feel like they have the assets to get an Eric Gordon, a Miles Turner, a sign a player like a DeMarcus Cousins, etc., cetera, et cetera. Why has something not happened? Because I think they want Kyrie. <laughs> they want Kyrie. And, and, for, and for them to get Kyrie, they really can't do anything. Because if they make that – like, if they if they make any other move before the Kyrie, either they're going to be a little – they're going to be a – assuming it's going to be a Kyrie trade. Hmm. They're going to either be, A, a couple pieces short, <laughs> or they're just not going to have the context to match. Because Aaron Gordon is getting some money now. She that was the problem money, a little yeah. bit. That's why – that was the problem – well, shoot, this offseason and even last season where because Tease was like for the for the assets you want back in return for Eric Gore, we can't we can't mm. do that. Mm. This is why Buddy Hill also wasn't was wasn't moved as free because we thought because it was like for the price he he has on him, that's that's a little too much for the assets you want to return, right? And uh that's why too, that's why I think that uh that Sixers trade, I think that's a lot more realistic. One, because Derek Moore is trying to get the Houston band back, yeah, together, back together with Joel and B. But I, I think, but to answer that question, I think the Lakers right now, they have to be very strategic because they have no picks to play with. They have. Well, you think the, how the Lakers have no picks to play with? Huh? Is that what you said? You said the Lakers. Yeah, the have Lakers no. don't have. They why don't do really they, have, like. Why do they I not have any? Because someone's already said they only got, what, like one or two mm, first round no, picks think, they can actually I think trade? they own all their picks still. I think that Anthony Davis trade is kind of, kind of done you now. Sure? If it's not done, the only pick they would own is 2026. I know they guarantee have a 2025 and a 2027 first round pick. Because they said they only got like one or two picks they can actually no, legitimately was, trade. There were multiple mock trades for Kyrie where they were offering 2025 and 2027. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. And was that the only two though? Because they said it's yeah. only two. First round picks, they well, can actually move. I'm, you would assume they'd have their 2028. Why would they have gotten rid of a 2028 first round pick for Anthony Davis in 2020? That's a very far gap. I could see 2026, maybe. But even 2024, would would they not maybe own that pick as well? Because uh, for AD, they would have given up the 2019 pick, right? I think they still had. 2020... 2021, I think, maybe, in 2022, there's like four f- first-round picks right there. You'd think they'd still have a lot of first-round picks in the future. Maybe they gave up like 10 first-round picks under the table for Anthony Davis or something. But I'm not I'm it's, not sure on that one. I think, yeah, it said the Lakers own both their picks in 2028, plus they own Washington's second-round pick. So apparently that's their only picks right now available at this moment. No way, bro. They have to own their 2025 and 2027. Who would they have given those picks up for? Like, think about it like that. Where would those picks have gone? And people are saying they're moving those picks on for Kyrie anyway. But I'm not sure. That's a weird one. I don't know where the Lakers would have lost all these picks from. 
because the 8A trade was so long ago now where they gave up, I think it was four future first round picks. And I swear they gave up their 2019 one, which was DeAndre Hunter, right? Yeah, because they had pick four. It ended up being DeAndre Hunter and the Pelicans turned that into Jackson Hayes and something else. So I'm not sure on that one. I don't know. But yeah. It, so they're saying they got a lot of pick swaps and there's a lot of picks yeah. that can't. I'm not sure. Maybe they, I don't know, maybe they get the picks back eventually. You know what I mean? Like with mm-hmm. in terms of pick swaps, maybe we don't know what pick they're going to have just yet. Whether it could be like the Pelicans or the Lakers, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah. Yeah, they see, they see for now, the trade. Lakers will, will have two first-round draft picks as far as way as 2027 and 2029 to offer to teams this summer in trade. So, yeah, those are the only two picks they can truly offer. Right All now. the other picks is owed to other teams. Yeah. As far as Cleveland, Chicago, Magics, and the Pelicans. But with the 2025 pick and stuff like that, do they, do they get their picks back eventually? Do they get them back, uh, or do, do they get the Pelicans pick maybe on a pick swap? They say the 2025 NBA draft, first-round pick potentially owed to the Pelicans. Second-round pick is owed as well. Again, the Pelicans will own one of the Lakers' 2024 or 2025 first-round picks, but yeah. the only one of them, but only one of them. But because of the nature of the trade, the Lakers won't know which one they have until 2024, which is why neither pick is tradable right now. Oh, so that's why. So that's why. It, so that's it. what I meant. So, yeah, so those picks, they technically have them theoretically, but they can't move them until yeah. the a draft. Little, a little bit of guy. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, that makes sense. I was going to say, where did all their first-round picks go? So, basically, in terms of a pick swap, that basically means they'll either own their pick or the Pelicans, right? Whichever one is the worst pick, I think they'll own. Yep. Which will probably which... be the Pelicans pick. Yep. So, the only pick they really have on hand that's – is purely theirs. Well, two is twenty twenty seven and the twenty 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 nine. Which is well, why, they can still move that for Kyrie anyway. Yeah, but but that's 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 literally two first round switch. Means they ha- like like I said, they have to be really really st- so so okay. for a team like let's say Houston where they was like for Eric Gore and they want at least one first round or two second mm. round picks. They can't do that. Like, yeah. they, like, if they really want Kyrie, they can't do that. Buddy Hill, like, if someone, like, I know earlier they was talking about they want one first round. They can't do that. Like, well, I mean, especially they can. If the They'd premium, have to give up the 2027 or 2029, right? Yeah, but then <laughs> if you do that, if you do give one of them, what you going to do for Kyrie? Because Brooklyn, I mean, Brooklyn ain't going to just lay down. Yeah. And take, Brooklyn will take two. They'll, I think they'll get two. They'll yeah. get those first round picks. But, yeah, doing that Kyrie trade maybe means you can't do – one of the other trades there. I'm so, sure you'd rather do the Kai Ray trade and then just pick off a DeMarcus Cousins or someone anyway. That'd be fair. All right. So we've pretty much figured out that the Lakers are relatively stuffed, but I still feel like they shouldn't panic just yet because there are still a lot of moves to make and things like that. Um, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily over look into that too much, but I figured, you know, we, we've kind of talked about a lot of teams now. There'll be one more that I kind of want to talk about before we move on to some Cavs content, because we know damn well that's what everyone's waiting for, right? Yeah. I'm I'm wondering, let's just say the New York Knicks, right? Because we know they're getting Donovan Mitchell. It's a matter of when. I'd like to talk about the Knicks and Donovan Mitchell, as well as the Utah Jazz buyout market. But we know they're getting Donovan Mitchell. It's a matter of when. Let's say it does happen. They lose... Fournier, McBride, someone else, whoever it may be, four future first round picks, right? Five or six, maybe. Are the Knicks a top four team in the East if they make this happen? No. Because they would have Jalen Brunson, Donovan Mitchell, RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, and Mitchell Robinson. That's a really good starting five. Then you got good bench players, Derek Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, Isaiah Hartenstein, Obi Toppin. Is that not a top five team, top four team? 
No. 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 I got a Knicks fan who disagree. He reckons they're the third best team in the East if this happens. In the East? Yeah. So who would be better than that Knicks team? So we'll look at it. The Celtics. The Bucks would be better. Right? I'm not going to say the Heat because I don't think the Heat have improved enough to scare anyone in the NBA right now. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, say, I'll say the Bucks and the Me- Celtics. The Nets, if they keep it all together, and the 76ers. But then I've got the Knicks over the Bulls, the Cavaliers, and the Raptors, if they're able to get all that stuff done, right? Because, I don't know, that's a good team. No. Who, who and the reason why I don't agree, I'm sorry with Miami. Because technically, if we go off that, we technically thought the same thing last season. People said, hmm. They wasn't scary. They was a fluke. Mm. All that stuff. And truth be told, we realized that team defense has overwhelmed a lot of these teams, and I think Knicks would be overwhelmed because their offense is not that – like, yeah, Don, but how much faith do you have in R.J. Barrett and Julius Randle? I like R.J. Barrett, but how much faith do you truly have in those – and, I mean, also Jalen Brunson, but let's be real here. If you pit Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell on the floor at the same time with a team like Miami, who is a team defensive team, we seen what they did to Atlanta who tried something like that. So if New York put that on the floor in a no in a season or in a playoff, that's not going to happen. I, so I do think Miami's going to have a higher seed than them. Boston's yeah. going to have a higher seed than them. Milwaukee's going to have a higher seed than them. Philadelphia is going to be have a higher seed than them. And it depends if Chicago stays healthy. If Chicago's mm. not healthy, I can see that kind of swap it in and out. But those four or five teams I just named is going to be higher than the Knicks, confidently, in the East. You think the hate – I feel like the hate because I was very big on them last season, but I'm not that big on them this season. I don't know if they really got a whole lot better. You know what I mean? They didn't get a lot better. But the Knicks is not that overwhelming with Don for me to confidently say. Because, yeah, theoretically, the Knicks got better. But what, did they get that much better than Miami? Mm. And I don't think so. Even though Miami didn't really make – they didn't make any moves, actually. They just yeah. lost P.J. Tucker. But their team is still a really great defensive team, defensive team without mm. them. Like, honestly, on paper, I mean, I guess the Knicks would be good. But I, but in a game, in a in a longevity standpoint, I still got Miami. Yeah. Like, uh, my because, you know, Miami's going to play a lot more games than the talent out there in New York, especially if you're talking about Derrick Rose and, and Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson. You know, those, like, if that's your – especially Mitchell Robinson, like, you know, I I don't truly think – oh, I know. In a regular season, yeah. The Knicks is not going to play better than uh, Miami. My worry with the Knicks is – would be the uh, defense. Oh, well, not the defense, the coaching With no true star players, they still was 50 to 29. Oh, sorry. I I completely lagged. I said it. (laughs) You, oh, yeah, yeah that's why I was like, huh? Oh, like, what just happened? Oh, my internet connection is like, apparently it's unstable. That's what I'm being told. <laughs> yeah, no, I just like, I, I'm speaking. I'm like, you just start speaking. I was like, what the hell is happening here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't um, even hear it. I'm like, what was yeah, that? Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, what I was saying, I was trying to say, <laughs> I, I think the coaching for New York is really questionable for me. I don't know what's going on there. Because I feel like Tom Thibodeau just loves his defense so much. And what the Knicks have done is they've brought in a lot of offensive guys. If you bring in Donovan Mitchell, you move RJ to the three, who is a six foot seven small forward, who, don't get me wrong, that's an appropriate height. But under Tom Thibodeau, I don't know if he's going to like RJ Barrett at that small forward. It didn't really work this past season when him and Fournier started together. I don't know if Tom Thibodeau is the right guy to have coaching this offense. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't 
I do feel like, I mean, if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, if we're being real, Miami, I'm not sure if they have a better team on paper than what New York does, but they're better coached. They've got a better system. They got more veteran players. They probably should be a higher seed. The New York could have a better team on paper. They've got a very incredible 10 man rotation where you have some insane offensive guys. You've got, again, the second option that Dallas just had when they made it to. Did, they, did Dallas make the conference finals? They did, didn't they? Yep. Yeah. So you've got Dallas's second option now, their point guard and shot creator. You have Donovan Mitchell, the first option. If they get Donovan Mitchell, but I think we all know they are. The first option of the Utah Jazz, their best player, the face of their franchise. Then you still got RJ Barrett, your number one guy, the supposed face of your franchise. And then Julius Randle, who was not was literally an all-star a season ago. The offense is incredible. The spacing is there. The playmaking is there. The shot creation is there. Catch and shooting. But the defense yeah. and coaching, it's can it, it scares me a bit. And it's going to get worse. Like, it's going to get worse. Like, if you get Don, like, I, and you have Don Jalen Brunson mm. at the one and two, right? Because you paid Jalen Brunson as a starter. Yeah. He's and that was starting. the expectation he's going to be a starter. And if you get Don, he's, he's, he's a starter, right? You got two six one guards at your one and two. Then let's say, yeah, you said R.J. Barrett. You got Drew, Drew Randall at your four. And your well, best defender the guards, would probably the be Mitchell Robinson. Pretty decent. Well, I mean, now RJ Barrett's still a really good defender at that too. At the two, he's a very capable defender. Oh, but you, but you got him at the small forward. But you now. got him at the small forward. Julius you Randall you isn't. Back. He's an underrated defender, I think. People just trash on him so much, but I feel like his defense isn't that bad. He's just like a big dude, you know. Um, but then you still got Mitch Rob, who gets into foul trouble, but. I don't know. I feel like if you added some defenders off that bench, it would be a very incredible team. Like, a, if you brought a Pat Bev off that bench, watch out. <laughs> you know what, what you, I mean? What you give it up to get Pat Bev? If I was the Knicks, I would go a protected first. You know? If, if, if I was to get asked to bring in a Pat Bev, or I would have gone after a Royce O'Neal, to be honest, but Royce O'Neal just got sent to Brooklyn for some reason i don't know what's going on there but i would have gone after a royce o'neill if i was negotiating a diamond mitchell trade if i had to throw in an extra first round pick for royce o'neill i would have and that's what he ended up being worth on brooklyn anyway but yeah i like the knicks i like what's going on but when in, in terms of the jazz though what do you think is going on with their team because even if they trade away donovan mitchell do you know how many tradable assets the jazz have like, mm. let's just say they didn't trade any of these players. This team could literally still make the playoffs. And that's the funny thing. They could do an OKC from a couple of years ago. You've got Mike Conley, Pat Bev, Jordan Clarkson, Boyan Bogdanovich, who people forget is a 20-point-per-game type of guy. Um, mm. you know, you've got a ton of other guys. I'm just, like, completely spacing out here. Jared Vanderbilt, you've just brought in now as well. Um, there's ton of there's like a, a whole 15 men of solid good players. What do you think the Jazz are going to be doing though? Do you got do you think they're going to be keeping all these players and boosting their value and trying to make the playoffs? Is that what you think they're going to do here? I don't think they're going to well, if if they happen to make the playoff, I think it's going to be like how OKC was a couple years ago. Yeah. With, with Chris Paul, like if they make it, hooray. Because they're, I think their overall intent is they're going to wait, cash in, probably wait till the trade deadline where a lot of these teams is like, all right, we're one we're, uh, one playoff player away mm. from pushing the needle. And they're going to trade them for like maybe, what, one or two first-round picks. Yeah. Whatever seems fit. Maybe take on a bad contract, get a pick. Like, they're going to do a OKC. I think uh, a Utah right now, Utah right now, they're just trying to cash out. Understandably, right? Because they're trying to get as much ca- cap room as they can, <laughs> get as much collateral as they can, as much assets as they can in the span, while they have these these players healthy, 
and still averaging because, like you said, Jordan Clarkson is a good asset for a lot of teams. Hassan Whiteside as a rim protector. Well, Whiteside actually cheap hasn't there. been brought back yet. Really? So, yeah. Do you want me to radio you their depth? Mm. So their depth is incredible. <clears throat> the issue is, is they don't have a, any power forwards or centers. So let me read you off their debt. Mike Conley, Bogdanovich, Malik Baisley, Jordan Clarkson, Patrick Beverly, Rudy Gay, Nikal Alexander Walker, Jared Vanderbilt, Jared Butler, and Yudoka Azubaki, and Walker okay. Kessler. So they have a very solid 11 man rotation, right? They're probably not going to make the play-in just because they don't have any big man, right? But if they moved on from, like, a Clarkson and this and that and went to the Lakers and brought in a player or two from over there, you could do something. Or there could be another team, like, um, out there that is trying to bring in some interesting depth players and you could realistically draw in a center back to improve your depth with those. They could very well still sign, like, a Dwight Howard, you know? Someone like that. A starting center who's available out there right now to improve this team. And, yeah, I think if they brought in a center or two, because you still got power forwards there, you got Rudy Gay, Jared Vanderbilt, you could still, you know, do something really, really interesting. Unless you just decide to go small ball, play Vanderbilt at the five, play Bogdanovich at the four. You could do something like that, right? You could start Conley and Beverly together, um, have a Malik Beasley at that three, maybe, bring a Clarkson off the bench. They have a lot of room to do. This is why I want to play 2K23 so bad, bro, because, like, my league and that are all down right now, and I just want to experiment with these teams and have some fun with them, you know? <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> but I want to know, do, yeah, you just, you just said about them making the playoffs, but, like, can they, without a center? Because they don't have a center really right now. I mean, they can. <laughs> yeah. If you want to be technical. Technical. If they is, it's like a play in spot. But uh, I don't necessarily think they need a center. They don't need a center. I mean, they obviously probably get one for cheap. You know, mm. maybe resign. I'll probably just resign and resign if he's if he's still in the market. I'm. I didn't. Even, I thought he was still signed for another year. Actually. Yeah. Well, um, that's another one too. They could bring back Whiteside. Just bring back him. He's honestly at moments in the playoff, he was a lot more productive for them to really go bear was and uh, a lot of crucial moments. So yeah, bring him in. Don't I mean you already wasn't giving him like a lot of minutes. So you can do the same thing there if you want to try a small ball lineup. I don't know what Utah identity is trying to develop into. Maybe they just trying to see what's you know how it looks. Mm. Um they could do a lot of different things, honestly, because uh because on paper, like those names you said, they can make a playing spot right now <laughs> in the West. Shoot, OKC did it. You know, literally two years ago, what they like, Loki would have exactly built roster like that. <laughs> yeah, just without the like, center depth and stuff. You know what's interesting yeah, though? They chose to technically waive. They didn't really waive him. They didn't extend his qualifying. They got rid of Eric Pascal. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That guy. <laughs> what too? They, they, no one. He's a free agent. No, no, I'm saying I would too. Oh, oh, I was gonna say. I think they would too. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. He's not that good. <laughs> He's not that good at all. He's a very weird, no. interesting player. Yeah, I know people said he was the next Draymond, but uh, <laughs> I don't think he's the next Draymond Green. No, at I, least I not yet. Because how yeah. old is he? Twenty-five. You know. Maybe he could do that in Australia, his MBL or something. He can become the new Draymond over here or something <laughs> if he wants. I don't even know if he could do that here, but yeah, that's a, that's a weird one. I don't know. That's well, I guess we'll have to see what happens with the Jazz. I just want to play 2K, bro. Get me the new 2K23. Let's make it happen. Do you, do you have PS5? <laughs> hmm? I do. Yeah, there you go. Stay tuned. Me and Rally are going to pull up on Park or something. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna run it, <laughs> but um, with the Cavaliers though, because there's some Cavaliers stuff to talk about. Colin uh -oh. Sexton, uh oh, what do you think's going on with Colin Sexton right now? 
<laughs> you know, um, I tell you like this, man. Um, Darius Garland getting extension extension this season may have opened up the doors to a lot of things because had DG not got his extension, it would have op- it would have left room for Colin a clear cut option that Colin was going to end up getting resigned. Mm. Now that uh, DG got his extension a year early, and Colin did it. <laughs> It kind of pits a lot of things I've even said on the back burner because it's like um, Colin might actually get traded or at least he's going to have – it's an option at the very least because now you're talking about – you're hearing people say, let's do a sign and trade for Mike Collin, which I hope to God that does not happen. Yeah, no, I, I, really don't, do. I don't want – stay but, away uh, from that, Cavs. Yeah, I, Kobe, please. I, I beg of you, but – I I think Colin I think Colin is gonna end up resigning here. I, I truly think that. But I do think Kobe Altman is I, I think he's gonna use this as leverage to A to get his price down, which I think mm-hmm. that's probably the problem. I think that's I don't think it's uh, a talent issue. I think it's just he thinks he's a little he's a little overpriced right now. And that was one of the things I was fearing because I felt like Colin was probably going to get at least one one fifty plus. Mm. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to say that. And when you already gave Colin, we gave Colin, uh, not Colin, DG, well, like two hundred something. Mm. So you don't want to have DG and Colin making two hundred million dollars, and you gave Jared Allen a hundred. You're probably going to extend Karis LeVert, and then. Evan Mobley, if he keeps developing, he's going to get some money. He's going to get the max as well. Super max. So, so you can't – like because, like I say all the time, if you give players that type of money, you basically said this is the roster you're locked in with. This is the roster you think you can potentially yep. make the finals with. I'm not sure if Kobe's sure about that, or at least at the very least, he want more money on the table to make more moves to make sure that this is the team he's confident in to potentially make it to the finals, which is why I think he's using this as leverage. Because uh, if Colin Sexton is truly, and I'm not sure the exact dollar amount, a lot of people's not sure, but my logical thinking cap is saying that Colin is probably, and he signed with Rich Paul, so you know he's, you know, <laughs> he's trying to get a pad. And my logical thinking cap is saying he probably asked for maybe like 190, 180. Because when you see the market right now, like Michael Porter Jr. broke that, like when he got like 200 some yep. like, for Michael Porter Jr. Like, and I like Michael Porter Jr., but 200? You know, you got rookie distinction coming off like 190, 170. And I think Colin Sexton and his mom believes, you know, I deserve that type of money. Like, I, like at the very least, he's going to get more than 100 million because Jerry got yeah. 100. So. Well, he also uh, watched Anthony Simons and Jalen Brunson oh, yeah. receive $25 million oh. per year deals. And he could arguably say, my best season was better than both of those players' best seasons in the NBA. Because people forget Colin Sexton had a season where he averaged 22 points per game. Now, the spacing and all that stuff might not have been that great that season. But at the end of the day, he's had more of a consistent season than both Brunson and Simons did. Where Brunson's money came from, heard. yeah, where Brunson's money came from was it was built off the playoffs. It was built off the playoffs. That's where his money came from. Anthony Simon's money was built off Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum being injured. Colin Sexton's money is not being built off anything right now because the argument is his 22 point per game season was a fluke because we didn't have anyone else to put up points and all of that type of stuff. And then when he actually played this season in a somewhat system that we had going on, he only averaged 16 points on 28% from three, which doesn't warrant any more than 21 million a season. My thinking is as well is there could be something else going on here where the Cavaliers could be waiting all off season to get a trade done. But don't be surprised if I release this goddamn podcast and Colin Sexton is playing for like 
the Shanghai Sharks or something on two hundred million dollars a season because that's how my luck is. <laughs> like I don't know how it's gonna be. I think at the very least, I think Kobe Altman might take the approach of Phoenix with DeAndre Ayton um, and just wait till someone gives an offer sheet. Yeah, just to see his value, to truly so, see what his value were. Who is and make give his up the offer sheet? Huh? Who's gonna offer the offer sheet? That's and that's the billion dollar question, right? Because, and I think low key that's what Kobe Altman is waiting for. Because of, let's say hypothetically someone don't, we know his value is not that high. We know his value is not one ninety, is not one seventy, is not one fifty. Mm. Now Kobe can, to an extent, lowball him a little bit because it's like, hey, I let you out in the open market. Technically, twenty nine other teams didn't really give you consideration. We value you here. Don't get me wrong. But if 29 other teams is not going to give you that money, what makes you think we're going to give it to you? Right. Let's come down. Let's bring your value up. Sign this. And then after this extension, then we can talk chickens. Right. Mm. But if a team say, all right, uh, let's say, even though they wouldn't do that, but let's say the OKC Thunder say, all right, we give you 190. Now Kobe Altman got two days to make the decision. Is he worth 190? Should I do a sign and trade or should I just let him walk for nothing? If if a team is offering Colin Sex some 190, I'm letting him walk. Like that's just the reality of it. I'm if a team offers Colin Sex some 150, I'm letting Colin Sexton walk. There is no assets that we can get back that are worth taking on a $150 million contract. Now, if he was to get offered 120. If that is a five-year deal that we have to get back on, so what would it be, twenty-two million or something per year? I would, I would probably accept that, right? My thing is though, who is going to offer Colin Sexton such a big deal? Like, I, I guess I can search it up now. Who has remaining salary? Like, I, I really don't know, and it would, I think it would mainly come from a sign and trade. I think the obvious one is the Utah Jazz. I think they're the obvious one. Yeah. I think there's players we can get from Utah that could help very well help help our team. But I'm not sure. Who do you think has the most cap space in the league? There are two teams that have quality well, now cap San space. Antonio. Yes, 26.8 million. And the Pacers somehow have 26.7 million. I feel like the Pacers have a lot of players locked up, so I don't know how they have that cap space. Because of that trade they did with the uh, Malcolm Brogdon at free. Because oh, that's what that's what ended up giving them enough money to even extend the uh, DA because of that trade. They freed up that much money. Yeah. And then the Pistons have $7 million. That's the next best. What about the Spurs? Is they really that under? They don't even got nobody. The, or, the Pistons? Uh, how, yeah, how a, high is the Spurs? How much money cap does the Spurs so have? So, the Spurs have number one. They have $28 million, oh. pretty much. Okay, perfect. That's, yeah. Okay. But do you think the Spurs would even think about that? Because the reason the Pistons are in uh, a weird salary cap situation right now is because they've got Kelly Olenek on $38 million, Marvin Bagley's on $38 million, Cade's on eleven, Alec Burks is on ten, Nerlens Noel is on nine and a half, Kemba Walker's on nine and a half. I don't know why, but they're paying DeAndre Jordan seven point eight million next season. Where that came from, I'm not sure. But yeah, the Pistons are paying DeAndre Jordan seven point eight million, and yeah, that's where some of their salary cap issues are coming from. But yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think the I don't think the Pistons get Colin Sexton. I don't think that happens. Well, I think that's off the table. Especially because they got Jaden Ivey, yeah. which uh, to a degree, to their eyes, could be Colin or better, mm. or at least better than Killian Hayes, who I think is off the t- <laughs> who's going to get <laughs> traded. But I-, I think they're all in with Jaden Ivey. I think Colin for Detroit might is completely off the table. Cade and Jaden Ivey, I think, is going to be that. Their, their ideal one, too. Yeah. Um. So when you're talking about room for – Point guards, that's why I thought of uh, San Antonio. That could be a home, but the question is, do they got the assets for Cleveland? 
mm. long term. Well, um, I, th- I think the Spurs as well. They the Spurs would maybe say to themselves, um, "Well, first of all, we're probably the worst team in the league." Like, I don't think it's a question that the Spurs, Spurs are one hundred percent the worst team in the league, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So we're all agreeing on that. Spurs are the worst team in the league. The Spurs could say to themselves, if we get Colin Sexton and trade up an asset or two, are we still the worst team in the league? Is that Victor guy 100% ours? You know what I mean? And then the Jazz could say to themselves too, holy crap, we've got a lot of guard depth here. We're going to send some of these guards to the Lakers and all of this stuff's going to happen. But we want to bring in a young guard like Colin Sexton and maybe build around. They could say to the Cavs, we'll give you Boyan Bogdanovich and one of the first or two that we got out of Minnesota and the Knicks when they do the Donovan Mitchell trade. If I'm the Cavaliers, I'm 100% taking a Boyan Bogdanovich, I think, for Colin Sexton. Would you do that? Because you get a first round pick or two and you get an 18 points per game type of guy that averages 40% from three. I, I like that. Yeah, and I think because I like what he brings to a team. Yeah, and he adds a lot. We get a we can put him at the small four too. Yeah, small four pop, or we got a lot of flexibility. So yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that he'll cover that need and he's gritty, (laughs) which you got that dog. Like if you uh, if you watch that Utah Dallas series, even though Utah lost, Mm. but it was just those small things he was doing because I wanted Luka to win so bad, but it was like those small things he was doing. (laughs) That was like, yeah. Then they could, like, when they tried to run small, because they had their best rotation when they ran small, they had to take Rudy mm. out, pit him at the uh, four, fluctuate him at the five, and then... uh Hassan White tried to flip into the five sometime as well. Yeah, and that was, like, their best offensive lineup, and a lot of that is attributed to him because of how much he can, like, because he can tack inside, he can shoot threes, and he was just a masterful passer at times, and he can rebound. He can and pass because through, isn't that right? He's got good ball yeah. movement. And the reality is, too, is he could slip into our shooting guard position, I think. <laughs> Six foot seven yeah. shooting guard, which is pretty good. Imagine on that team, Garland at the one, Bogdanovich at the two. Uh, at the three, you'd have Larry Mark, and on four, Mobley, and at the five, Jarrett Allen. The only thing that starting five might not have is shot creation. But if Mobley develops as a shot creator, then holy crap. Watch out. That starting five would be insane. Defensively, that team would be insane. Like, Bo- Bogdanovich at the two. I don't even care if he's a little slow. I don't care. He's still long and big enough to, I think, be able to do that pretty well. But I rate that a lot. Another thing that I want to talk about, you know, is the Cavaliers New Jerseys. Have you seen them? What you, what'd you, <laughs> what'd you think about the old... They look a bit like summer league jerseys. What's going on there? That's crazy you say. That was the first thing I had in my mind is that they – at first I thought – I was like, these are the uh, – I'm like, I'm like, these are pretty cool summer league jerseys. Then I read the headline. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Oh. Yeah, and my reaction it's... too, I was reacting to the Miles Garrett video on camera. And Miles Garrett walked in. I'm like, is he wearing the new jersey or is he wearing the jerseys our summer league team has played in? And it turns huh. out he was wearing the Summer League jersey. The only difference is to the main jersey we've got right now is I think the font was a little different and there was one of the logos was like a different color or something, but it was pretty much the Summer League jersey. I think huh. the wine jersey sucks, dude. I think it's bad. The white jersey is very cool, though. You know I what like I mean? the black one. Yeah. You like the black one? I think the black one's cool as well. It kind of reminds me of the Pride jersey we had a while back, but uh, Cleveland Pride. Was that the, the championship? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with the say, Yeah, it is a bit like that, isn't it? I can see that. I like it. It's I just... like the new white one, though. I think that looks really cool with the, like, the net and stuff. Yeah, man, that red one is. That looks just like a silly <laughs> jersey. <laughs> that wild, yeah. And what is Kid Cuddy, bro? What is Kid Cuddy doing advertising the Cavaliers? jerseys that guy has never stepped foot into a cleveland cavaliers game in his life there are so many other guys you could have got bro mjk is in cleveland every single second whether they know he gets hate 
but that dude does everything for Cleveland, right? So many of those guys. You know what I mean? I think I think Kid Cudi's cool, but <laughs> I'd like to see him at a Cavaliers game. You know what I mean? <laughs> I agree. That would be pretty cool. And what about Usher? He literally owns like five percent of the Cavs, and he—I've never seen that guy at a Cavaliers game. I didn't know he he owned that until we won the championship. I'm gonna be honest with you. When they, I'm like, why is he in the locker room for? Why is he here? I don't think he was like, yeah. Knew. I don't even think <laughs> he knew. <laughs> he just like looking. It's like, am I supposed to be here? Buying the Cavaliers like, for Usher was like tax deductible. I think <laughs> he just needed to clear some tax money, and he was just like. Shit, I'm gonna I'll just throw some money over these guys and not do anything. But I, I'm not sure. The other thing I want to ask you though, but last thing before we leave, is did the Cleveland Cavaliers improve enough to be a playoff team? Because the way I see it is, the Cavaliers might be a seventh seed again, which is. Certified playoffs. I think we just we were the eighth seed, right? And we missed the plane. I don't know how we choked that, but uh, did the Cavaliers do enough? Because if you think about it, the Knicks have probably jumped ahead of the Cavs, especially if they're bringing in Donovan Mitchell. And then as well, the Hawks. They really didn't lose anyone. They just brought in Dejounte Murray, who's an All Star. Yeah. So did the Cavaliers do enough? I mean, we brought in Ricky Rubio, we drafted a Chai, we brought in Robin Lopez, and we have, of course, got the development of our young players. But you didn't bring back Sexton, you didn't bring in a Bogdanovich yet. What do you think? This is a tricky question because it's like, uh, because even with Rubio, we're not going to get him right away because, I mean, he's still recovering. So we're probably going to get him like in a halfway mark, you know, unless it's just a real speedy recovery. Um, But with those type of injuries, you're not trying to rush that. So realistically, by the trade deadline, we might see Rubio December, January, February-ish. You know what I mean? Now, I don't know if Cleveland – I think Cleveland is banking right now on their development, if that makes sense. If their development <laughs> happens like it did last season – I think that is enough to battle for at eighth and seventh seed, but it's going to be really, really hard when you look at the bottom tier teams in the East now, right? Like uh, maybe now the Hornets, I guess you can kind of take off because of a certain Marbury. players. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, you know no. situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could take off because I had the Hornets in there, but after his little situation, yeah, you could probably take the Hornets out. But then, yeah, like you got the Hawks, who's the Pistons, Dejounte Murray. I do think, yeah, the Pistons, who people under the Pistons, is going to make some noise. I, the at Pistons least they're going to battle good, for a plan. They're going to be a tenth seed, I reckon. Tenth or ninth seed, a good tenth or ninth seed. Then the Wizards, they supposed to be better uh, this season. I mean, with nah. Bill. I mean, even though <laughs> I understand, trust me, but on paper. They should be at least competitive for a play. Like that, that would be the expectation. You pay Bradley Bill that KP Kuzma. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I do think the Magic is going to be piss poor again. Uh, the Pacers. The Pacers. The Pacers and Magic. They they will be the fifteenth and fourteenth seed. I think. I think the it, Hornets could low key, low key, be the thirteenth seed. They did not address the interior yeah. defense. <laughs> they brought back an old coach and they lost their second best player who on some nights was their best player. Yeah. So they're going to, yeah, they're going to dip. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But then I think the, Raptors, the Wizards that might be. The Raptors fall down a little bit for me. I don't know how the Raptors did that well, dude. They shocked me so much. That, that big boy lineup scared a lot of people. Yeah. That defense and that. And, and people didn't anticipate Scotty Barnes to be that playing good. the way he did. Yeah, because I, I thought it was going to take him a couple years. He did it in one season. And I think that pit the Raptors confidently in a better situation. Um, and I think if he develops – if he develops again, I think the Raptors still going to be competitive because, I mean, you still got the Heat. You got Boston. Got yeah, the but the Bucks, Raptors the shouldn't be – they shouldn't be anywhere higher than us right now. 
we should be considered similar page to the Raptors because we were better than the Raptors yeah. before the injuries happened. Yeah, we was actually their seed, actually. Uh, well, yeah, we was actually we number were. one seed, if you want to be technical, at one point. Yeah. And then we dropped. We, didn't, we, didn't we get to, like, third at one stage and we were, like, the exact same wins or something nearly as the one seed? We didn't actually yeah, get to we got, one. And then we got the one because we beat we? Uh, Brooklyn. Yeah, we, we had beat Brooklyn and then Brooklyn Holy lost. Crap. And then we was, we was number one. We was we was number one seed. We was down one game, you know. Yeah, you know, and then we lost. Literally, once that we just <laughs> we could not buy a win after that. We that just, was so uh, frustrating. I don't know. I think the Cavaliers. Yeah, we should be similar. We should be like a a fifth to eighth seeded team. We should not be a playing team. We should, but this is tough. It is going to be tough. Like we. Our development is going to have to – because, like like I said, you look at these teams, you're going to have the Heat, you're going to have Boston, you're going to have the Bucks, the Sixers, the Bulls, the Knicks, the Raptors, the Hawks, the Knicks, the Cavs, the Wizards, and the Pistons. The Pistons. And those four teams you just named is probably going to be battling for playing. Let's assume the Knicks don't get done right now. But if they do get done, that's just – it's, it's going to be tough. The Knicks should still be a better That's team be than tough. the Cavaliers, I think. I still think if they got Donovan Mitchell, they would be a better team. You think than so? Us. Oh, yeah. you talking about without Don or with Don? Oh, without Don, they wouldn't be a better team than oh, us. Oh, okay. No so, way. yeah, because I'm about to say yeah. But, okay. Yeah, but right. with Donovan Mitchell, you wouldn't think a Jalen Brunson, Mitchell, Barrett, and Randall lineup. That's nearly four. Like, Brunson should make an all. He was playing like an all star in the playoffs. You got Donovan I think, Mitchell, I think, we, I think we overrate Jalen Brunson, though. We do. We do I, definitely I overrate him. But also, he had a good playoffs. So, I'm not sure. It is very, very tough. But we're, I mean, are we calling it quits here? Because there's only a minute left. And I mean. <laughs> why not? Why, let's why not make it quick. Because I know it's 6 o'clock. is going to happen before my eyes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is that when you're going to wake up for work? Oh, Unfortunately. Man. Oh, thank you for coming on and giving up your time. We This is like nearly a two-hour episode again. So we did pretty well. Go and subscribe to Relly. I'm going to be giving him a bunch of clips. They're going to be coming out on his channel. Go subscribe to the Clips channel. There's going to be like 400 different clips from this podcast episode again. Go check them all out. Link in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. But again, most importantly, go subscribe to Relly. But yeah, leave a like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Through the wastelands, through the